it appears from reading the blog, because I haven't read the book as yet, I'm just seeing it for the first time here, right. um, that uh, you, you felt, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, probably abandoned by, by your parents or right. rejected. I'm not sure exactly which word you used. Right. Um, and that, that uh, it's kind of, and like I said, it's kind of a strong word, like mm -hmm. saying that I was rejected. I don't, it, it's not necessarily a rejection, like a blatant rejection. Mm -hmm. um, rejection in, in that you, you know, you, as a child, mm -hmm. because you don't, as a child, you don't, you don't have the perspective of an adult. You really don't. You don't understand certain things. As a child, all a child wants is to be loved, to get some attention from the parents. And that's all children know and want, right? So when I say uh, abandoned or neglected, that's kind of where I'm coming from mm -hmm. as far as uh, more on an, on an emotional level. And even though my mom had moved away, for me, the physical doesn't mean much. You know what I mean? Because then if, if I was having conversations with her or things of that sort, then it would have been a lot easier to, like, you know, deal with certain things. But I just really mean on an emotional level mm -hmm. and a mental level more than, like, physical, even though she wasn't there physically. Um, but, yeah. But now that you're no longer a child, do you, have you seen her perspective? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And now that... And I mean, everything takes a little more time to like heal and really understand because you always think in your head that people could do better. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But you always, we're always going to think that because it's just human nature. But we also have to understand that people do the best with what they're given. And then, like I said before, people operate from their level of consciousness, not necessarily yours. So while I might be, you know... I might be more open to be like, all right, I'm going through this and I know I need to do this. Everybody doesn't have that, what's the word I'm looking for? Everybody is not open. Sometimes people aren't even open mm -hmm. to looking at things from a different point. So I, I think I'm lucky that I'm able to look at things from different perspectives and I'm able to empathize and put myself in a, somebody else's position and understand like, hey, Everybody's not you. Everybody doesn't have the propensity to deal with things the way you do. And that's an understanding that I think if everybody acquires, they sh you know, you get through things a lot easier once you understand mm -hmm. it. Did the healing um, process involve a conversation with your mom as well? Um, I, we really haven't really had an actual conversation about mm -hmm. it. I, I had written... A post and she read it and then you know she we spoke we well and when the blog when we yes. <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know you get these calls and they think you're being crazy <laughs> but um when in the initial when the blog first came out mm -hmm. the the bio on there because you know not only is it about me it needs to it still needs to be compelling enough so you keep reading mm -hmm. you know what i mean and there aren't any embellishments or lies in there mm -hmm. and that's not what i'm saying but I still need to write it in a way that you want to keep reading. Mm. So when and you don't send it for the proof or anything. No, <laughs> <laughs> nobody even knew I was coming out with the blog. Mm. I do things that everybody finds out after, and they're like, mm. "Oh," <laughs> and I'm just like, "Yeah, I know," but whatever. So, you know, she she contacted me and she's like, "You know, I know it's it's." it's she kind of she more or less was just like, "Yeah, I totally get where you're coming mm. from," and she, you know, she wasn't she wasn't like mad or anything, you know, so. Um, we spoke about it a little bit, mm -hmm. probably not as much as we could have. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's still time anyway. Yeah. You know. I mean, well, you know what? You can, you're not promised time, truth mm -hmm. be told. Mm -hmm. But I can't honestly say, I mean, my mother is a, a great woman, you know? I mean, look at me. I turned out great, I think, mm -hmm. uh, you know? So, and then it's, it's, you also have to consider where people are coming from. Um, I had an opportunity to like go to school and for my education and that, obviously you know has an impact in who i've become and how i'm able to understand certain things somebody else in my position who probably didn't get an opportunity to you know just broaden the education may not be able to empathize with their mom you know what i mean and i had a discussion earlier today just about people often begrudging their parents mm -hmm. you know because what we do is we, we kind of forget that our parents are humans too. So we have them at a higher standard or on a pedestal where for us, they should do, they should do no wrong. Or we don't see them as being a regular mm -hmm. 
but they are they're human beings just like you and i and they're they're they make mistakes and it's okay you know i mean you won't just blatantly keep hurting somebody obviously but i think once we remember that parents are human beings just like you and i then it definitely makes it a little easier to understand them so is it more liberating now that you've put this out in the beginning of myself absolutely uh, i think the blog more liberating than the book <laughs> because um I really got to like get my feelings out mm -hmm. you know what i mean and then the book i think i was more excited to put the book out because i kind of like i saw the growth in myself and that that's what i was going for so once once i was actually able to have an actual book like i had the idea in my head and the book really came about for me um writing quotes mm -hmm. and then i was like i could expand on this and make it into a book And then I made it a book where I would want to read because even though I write, I'm not a big reader of like crazy, like, oh, I've really read this book, that book. Mm -hmm. I will read books that are very specific to like self-improvement. Mm -hmm. So like I love The Alchemist because I, I think it's like a great mix of like mystery and, and real life. And just and magic you know what i mean and though it is fiction it speaks to just so many things that we go through in life just, and just the universe wanting you to get to where you need to go um that's one of my favorite books i've that's probably the only book i've read three times <laughs> three times <laughs> i read it three times but the alchemist is very short mm -hmm. and is very daunting and and it keeps you drawn in but it is still like a self-improvement book you know what i mean And for me, even though I love self-improvement books, I don't like when it just goes on and on and on. So this is why I made my book so short, straight to the point, and then it's interactive. So you could kind of like, there are questions in there, you answer it. Some questions you might skip because we're not always just ready to face certain things about ourselves. And then it serves as a journal also because let's say you read the book today, probably a year from now if you've answered those questions you could go back and see would I have responded in this way you know what I mean so I made it that way because it those are things that I like in a book and those are things that I like to do I will write and I like to reflect and go back and see what progress I've made so it's very true to who I am